Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa and I'm so glad that you're here. This was a request that I actually had about how to wind a bobbin on your machine. The main thing no. is to wind the bobbin correctly. Um, it's gonna make a difference in the tension, um, how the thread is actually being fed through the machine. So. Um, I hope this is going to be helpful to you. So stick around and let's go ahead and wind that bobbin. Okay guys, so this video here is going to be about winding a bobbin. So just a few quick important steps. Um, just remember that every machine is different. It actually um, winds the bobbins different from one machine to the next. Um, some are going to have a little more steps, some are going to have a little less. So um, this is just how this machine here um, winds the bobbin. This is the Singer Heavy Duty um, 4432. Um, so I put my thread where it's, when it's pulling out, it's actually coming up from the bottom and out. And hopefully you can see that. Um, and then I'm gonna follow my steps accordingly how it says when I'm supposed to be feeding my thread through here. So, and this is actually for my bobbin. Now you may want to go ahead and refer back to your manual um, because again, you know, it may be wound on your bobbin a lot different than this one does. So. And this one actually has like an arrow um, directing me in how to put my thread on this little tension guide here. So I need to take my thread and wrap it around and then come back this way. So make sure that you got that locked in there, okay. And most machines actually have this right here. And this actually holds the thread. It keeps it at a nice um, tightness. So it's a tension guide here. And then you wanna make sure that you're actually using the bobbins that go with your machine. That's gonna play a big role. Um, because if the bobbin's not sitting in the machine, right, your tension is gonna be off. So when I'm threading my bobbin, I take my thread and I go in between the two little lay, like I don't know how to describe this, but I'm gonna go in between this here and put my thread through the hole. And I'm gonna hold that up while I put it on this foot here, and then I'm gonna push it to the right. And that's gonna lock it in place. And it's telling the machine that we are going to wind this bobbin here. So, and let me get this untangled here and get this going the right way. So I'm gonna hold up on this, just like this, and press on my presser foot and wind it. Now make sure that your thread is actually going on your spool and not down underneath here. All right, so once you have some thread on your bobbin, go ahead, cut the end of this off. Now not too far down, but enough to where it's not gonna get tangled in the machine. So just continue to fill up your bobbin accordingly to however much you think you're gonna need. Um, if you don't have too many bobbins, I would just say just fill it up just a little bit um, because you might have a couple different projects that you're doing. So um, in my machine here, this heavy duty one here, I actually have a denim needle. So the next thing I would say that's pretty important, if you're gonna be sewing any type of jeans, leather, faux leather, any type of thing that's actually gonna be pretty thick, you're going to want to make sure that you've got the proper needle. So here I have gotten um, some heavy duty needles here. Um, 
I usually use the 18. This one is a denim. And then the 18 heavy duty. And then one is for leather. So this machine here, I usually use it if I'm making bags or something that's big and bulky. It actually has more power to push the needle through the thickness of the fabric. So make sure that you have the proper needle and that will make things a lot easier. So you can get a, um, a needle that will actually work for your machine in there um, and give that a try. So let's go ahead and put the bobbin in and then we will do a hem on our jeans. Now, placing the bobbin inside your sewing machine, you're gonna wanna make sure, um, again, that it's the proper bobbin. So when you're placing the bobbin in there, inside this uh, bobbin plate itself, it has a hook down inside there, and you wanna make sure that your thread gets fed down inside there properly. Um, if it actually comes out and it's loose, it may be because the bobbin is the wrong, the wrong bobbin for the machine. So, um, and then making sure that you actually thread your machine the right way plays a big role too as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and thread my machine and then I want to show you this extra little step that most people forget about. And on this machine, there's two of them. And so down inside this machine, it has this extra metal hook. So you want your thread to go behind that. And then there's another one just in front of the needle. And you wanna make sure that you're catching your thread inside that too as well. So, and then you can carry on um, with threading your needle. So I would say if you're having a hard time getting your needle to go through your fabric, you may want to replace your needle. It could be a little dull. Um, if it's bashing at your fabric, that could get um, quite annoying because the needle doesn't want to go down into the fabric so let's go ahead and get ready to do a hem on some jeans okay so do to do a hem on some jeans I'm gonna re actually remove this here um, that way I can slide my pant leg through here now I just have a little piece of um, pant leg here. This was some jeans that I had um, that were extra jeans and I've been using pieces out of it for different odd projects. So this actually will work really good. So when you're making a hem and let's just say that you cut this part off because the pant leg is way too long and make sure that you actually measure um, the length that you need of course and do that from the inside and then on the outside of the leg and then it's pretty self-explanatory really you can take another pair of your pant legs and look and see how they actually do a hem on there for me I actually do like two or three rolls so what I mean by that is turning it under a couple times um, so make sure that when you measure, um, you're leaving the seam allowance. Seam allowance is actually where you're bringing it up to the length that you want. So say you want to, um, take it up like two inches, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to not cut at the two inches you're gonna cut at like one inch and then you will actually roll your hem like such and then roll it again 
and then that will bring you to your two inch seam allowance. So um, just remember you gotta add your seam allowance in there, otherwise your pants will end up being high waters and then you will be just doing the complete opposite of what you're trying to do. So a lot of times I like to use um, some clips on things like this and I'll use the, the thicker clips or pens. Pens are fine, you could do that too. Um, and so, like I said, we're going to just roll that in a couple times and then we're gonna clip. So you wanna make sure that you turn your pant legs wrong side out and then folding it down this way and then sewing it otherwise you're going to have your hemline is going to be on the outside <laughs> and you're going to be able to see that you don't want that so i go ahead and i do my three rolls so i start at this center here the inner leg part and I roll it and then I roll it again and then I just clip it and then I do that again and I do that all the way until I get to the other side now I usually for something like this that's kind of big and bulky I usually like to go ahead and pin or clip um, and if you're pretty good at it, you don't have to, but I, I like to just because I feel like my sewing goes along a little bit faster where I feel like I have to do prepping as I go along when I'm sewing. And this way you already have it set to where you want it to be. And you can just keep sewing and don't have to stop sewing. Now you will want to check every so often and make sure you're not snagging anything, but going ahead and pinning or clipping and having your stuff where you want it to be set, it helps the process go a little bit faster. So I'm not being too precise on this, but make sure that you're precise when you are doing your jeans. Um, so this is just a regular sewing machine. This is not a serger. If you have a serger, the serger actually sews and then cuts the fabric at the same time. I do have one of those. Um, I'm not using that in this demonstration, as you can tell. So what I have for thread here too um, is just a regular thread. So this is just a regular 30 weight. I do suggest that you use a heavier weight of thread, um, something like this. Um, and this is like what I use for my bags and I would use for my jeans and stuff like that. Um, it is a thicker thread um, and it actually looks really nice. Um, and I will show you that here in just a little bit, how it actually looks really well on these jeans. So let's go ahead and get this one finished clipped and we'll sew a little bit. Okay, so on this machine, it actually has a extra lift to the foot which makes it very nice um, for getting this thicker stuff down underneath here. So um, now I would actually, when you're starting, I would put the bottom seam in first and then do the top. Um, or you can just do a one single seam. And I would say going ahead and if you do that, go ahead and do that up at the top. And then it just looks more professional. You'll see a lot of them that that's where they usually start out when they are doing that. 
And so I'm gonna find my thread and hold on to the, my thread and put my needle down in the position. And I'm gonna make sure that I am set on my length and my width and my needle is set. My tension is always where it needs to be already. And I'm doing a straight stitch. You don't have to do a zigzag. You can make it decorative here if you really want to. But I would say it's not really necessary. Up to you, depending on what you're doing. And I'm just gonna go along here just a little ways, just so that you can see how this is working. Just take your time, especially if it's the first time working with jeans. Now there's different types of jeans. There's, they have some elastic in them. The stretchy jeans those have elastic in them. And they're a little bit different to, I would say a little bit different to work with um, because it's easy to pull on the fabric and you really don't want to be pulling on that. Um, fabric as it's sewing. So you may come to a spot here where it gets a little bit tough um, going. You may find that you're going to have to hand crank. If you hand crank, make sure that you're cranking the wheel towards you and not away from you. I'm just going to go a little ways here. Now I'm not being too precise here. I'm just kind of sticking this underneath here. I'm not even grabbing the other half of it. I'm just kind of folding it, trying to get it down and out of my way because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a extra um, seam here with the other thread and kind of show you the difference in that thread there. I actually ordered this thread online. You can probably find it in Joann's. Um, I normally just buy Cokes and Clark thread and that's what this is right here. It does pretty good. It's a 30 weight. back locking that stitch in and when you're ending it and beginning end and begin in the same spot always start in the less lesser obvious area I would say so there you go there's that so I'm going to show you the next thread so this next thread here I'm going to show to you, it um, actually is thread through the machine a, just a little bit different. So I'm going to um, take this thread out of the machine, the bobbin and the upper thread out. And I use a... Um, thread holder, spool holder back there in the back. You'll be able to see right there, it holds these bigger ones. And when I'm removing my thread from my machine, I always cut that and then pull my thread out from the bottom. I don't ever pull it up through the top of the machine. Um, it's probably not good for it. And then if you wanna save that little thread that you pulled out, you can, you can save it for later. <laughs> if you feel like your thread stash is dwindling and you can use it for a later time. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that spool of thread on there. For now 
and I'm going to show you how this one is thread through there. So this is actually just sat down on there. And what I do is I bring it up and over this extra spool holder here and bring it across, feed it through both the hooks where they need to go. And then just like I would normally be threading it. So again, it's important that you actually have the correct um, needle for this um, because the thread's not going to, um, gonna want to go through the needle, the eye of the needle. It's gonna be too thick for it. So make sure that you've got your denim, your leather, your heavy duty needle on here. And then making sure it's wound on the correct bobbin and then feeding the thread directly inside the bobbin plate. And then needle all the way up. I do love these automatic threaders. <laughs> love it. All right. So I went ahead and chose to go with black um, and that's okay. You can pick whichever color you want. Like I said, I ordered these online. You could pick up a couple different colors that you think you're gonna be using. I would actually go with a color um, thread that's gonna match the fabric if you're a beginner sewer, then you won't have to worry so much um, about straight lines. Okay. And needle down. So then just kind of carry along as you're doing your hem. Now you can make your hem really, really tiny if you want. Um, and you can do one fold hem. You don't have to do the three like I do. Um, you can do it any way that you like. I just feel like uh, doing the three roll on that works really well looks really nice and again if your jeans are a stretchy material try not to pull on it try not to push your fabric through the machine carry along here and then I'll show you when it's all done. So when you want it, when you get to this inner seam, outer seam, make sure it's lining up really well. Um, otherwise it's going to show on the outside of that and it may not look very well. Um, I just want to make sure that that's pretty straight. You can get yourself a little tool like this and it will help actually feed your material through the machine a little bit. You could give it a little extra 
push with that, just holding the material down in place extra as the machine's actually pulling it through with the feed dogs. The machine will do all that work for you. You can just hold that extra bunch down and, and put some clips in here. This is gonna help a little bit. Holding my material down in place. It keeps wanting to unroll on me. These little clips are great. So if you have them, I would say use them. It's so nice having the proper materials and tools that you need when you're sewing. It makes such a big difference. Alright, so coming to the end and then back stitch. Now this does not have a self-trimming thread here, but I can cut it on the side. So I'm going to show you the difference in this thread here and the thickness of it. You can see how thick it is compared to the Coates and Clark. So that's why I actually would go with something more like this here, because it's actually gonna give you a really nice um, seam line there. Um, so this is the original seam that's there. Um, and you can probably order this color online if you want. Um, if you want it to match the rest of the seam thread. Um, this one actually, I'm trying to think it's a cream color, but it's probably pretty close to that. So there you go. So it would be just like that matching. So, but again, this is the upper part of the pant leg. <laughs> this is actually the bottom. So the bottom, you would be able to tell that it's your bottom and it wouldn't look like that. But there you go. There is um, how to hem a pant leg. It's pretty simple. The bottom line is making sure that you have the proper tools for it, the thread, the needle. Um, I think that you would be okay even if it is a, um, a little... Um, so a machine that's not a heavy duty, I think as long as you have the correct needle and the thread, I think you should be fine to do so. So I hope this helped you out and we will see you guys at the next sewing tutorial. Thanks for watching.